the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the story of his grace, Most Reverend Dr. Anthony John Valentine Obina, on his journey to priesthood. Jesus Christ has made us into our kingdom and priests for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Born on 26 June 1946 into a Roman Catholic family of an educationist, late Mr. Michael Obina and late Mrs. Grace Chinyo Obina of Omocham Emekuku in Owere North local government area in most states Nigeria. The Catholic influence was in the environment. And so I was born literally into the into a Catholic family and into the church, into the Catholic church. I baptized three days after my birth on the 29th of June. Well I started growing and became closely associated with the Irish missionaries, priests and reverend sisters. I received First Holy Communion at St. Teresa's Primary School of Moahel and also started primary school in Moahel. Then when I was confirmed at the age of nine, I began gradually to think of the possibility of becoming a priest. The Archbishop is the seventh of the family of 12. Little Antonio Bina was fascinated by the religious life of Irish missionaries. Thus, his zeal to become a Roman Catholic priest started. When I was in Standard 5, of primary school, I told my father that I would like to be a priest. I would like to take the entrance examination. My father said, shut up, we are too young <laughs> to begin to desire to go to the seminary. He said, okay, wait until you get to standard six. So when I got to standard six, I reminded my father of my earlier desire at Standard 5 that I would still want to go to the seminary. And so I took the entrance examination to St. Peter Clever Seminary, Opala. I was also preparing to take the entrance to the Holy Ghost Junior at Inihela, uh, the seminary of the Holy Ghost Fathers. Before the entrance examination of the Holy Ghost Fathers in Inihela, the result or the entrance examination at Okmala had come up. So my father said, what? Well, whether you go to Okmala or go to Ihiala, it's all about the priesthood. So you can go. You go into Mass and beginning to serve at Mass. I felt like I would like to do what the, those priests were doing. Even though my father was a headmaster, each time the Irish priests came around, I, I saw them a more important presence <laughs> than my father. And so I began to say, oh, well, I would like to be somebody greater than my father, because I saw that priest as a bigger, greater. But that was a childhood perception of the priesthood. It was when I was in class four in the junior seminary, through my close association with the Reverend Father John Ryan, who had been my rector, in the minor seminary and who had a very friendly relationship with me. During the holiday, when the seminary closed, I would stay back and he would welcome me and I would stay in his house. But I was accompanying him to go on sick or to visit the sick into different villages. Either while he was at Obowo, where we had a seminary, or at Omoa here, where he later on became the parish priest of St. Fimbas Omoa. I began to say, ah, 
Is this what the priesthood is about? Helping people, attending to them uh, spiritually and also caringly and materially. So that was when I began to feel oh, that uh, the priesthood or the call to serve. And that is why when eventually I was ordained a priest in 1972, I chose the motto to serve God and his people. And I took it from uh, the Gospel of St. Mark, I think chapter 10, verse 45, where Jesus said that I have come to give my life to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. So that became my inspiration. So I went through the junior seminary, I went through the major seminary in Enugu uh, before the war. But unfortunately, because of the Nigeria Biafra War, uh, the seminary in Enugu was discontinued. And we managed to continue in Akwaibom, current Akwaibom, in a place called Afangabong. Then we ran to Amimo, ran to our mama, and then the war ended. And we went back to Enugu, Bigad Memorial Seminary. And so I was ordained on the night of April 1972 at the Mount Kamea Catholic Church, Emekugu, my hometown and my original home parish. So that's how I moved from childhood into the priesthood because I was fascinated. I loved to imitate what the Irish priests and missionaries were doing. The first time we came from home, I had to see the then Bishop Wellen, Bishop of Oweri. We were waiting for him downstairs, and Bishop was living in a decked wooden house. So you would hear their footsteps when, they, when he was coming down. And as we knelt, the person he now picked and touched when he came down was uh, Tony. Looks like that is the day he got his anointing as to who's going to be a priest. And then God guided him to where he is today. Last May we started class one the same day at Obo, which is in uh, Omaha Diocese. Uh, by then, um, the minor or preparatory seminary was at Obo, taking care of. Uh, uh, seminarians, junior seminarians from Umahia and Oweri. As a, a seminarian, uh, the Archbishop, I would say, uh, is a very brilliant young man, very brilliant. Um, a good soccer player at that time and a, a great chess player. Uh, we had a, a priest who uh, taught us how to play chess and uh, that game of chess he was so good at it that it took him to uh, Fernanda Poo at that time which is now Equatorial Guinea. In him I see this saying you know people usually say that when God gives you something to do he also equips you to do that we call it the grace of office I think I see that manifested in a very eloquent way and him he wasn't a man who had the best of health after his priestly ordination on 9th april 1972 young reverend father anthony obina went back to school to continue his education in theology it was a day night of april but we hadn't finished our program of studies so I had to go back to the seminary first of all and do the bachelor's degree program in theology. Finished it, but the bishop then, uh, Bishop Mark Unebu, had planned that I would continue uh, into further studies as soon as possible. So by September of that same year, 1972, the bishop sent me to Rome to go and begin a master's degree in theology, specializing in moral theology. So before I started teaching, I got 
a master's degree in theology and a diploma in psychological counseling while I was in Rome. So I was in Rome from 1972, September to sometime March 1975. The change of environment was not favorable to Reverend Father Anthony Obina as he was affected by the European cold weather. The cold was too much for me, the cold of Europe. I'm so tropical, I love the sun, I love Africa. So I had to come back after the masters and the diploma. And for a while, I had to recover. My head was booted, but I was a goalkeeper. So somebody hit me in the head. It may have uh, compounded the situation and led to my developing sinusitis. And so it wasn't convenient to be too, too long in a cool climate. So I came back. Upon his recovering back home, Reverend Father Anthony Obina began his first pastoral work as a chaplain at Christ the King Catholic Chaplaincy, Alvan Ikoku Federal College of Education, Owiri Imo State. After one year recovering, I served initially in the minor seminary in Omoa. I served for three months as a, a rector of the seminary, and then for one year, roughly, for about nine months, I served as a director of religious education in a very diocese at that time. And along the line, I applied with the encouragement of the bishop to teach at Alvan, Ikoku College of Education. So I went for the interview and successfully I went through the interview and got appointed as a lecturer in the Department of Religious Studies. At the same time, the bishop appointed me the Catholic chaplain of the Albany Koku College of Education. So I was then teaching at Alvan and also serving as a Catholic priest to the college community of students and staff from 1976 to 1979. I Bishop Obinda, AJV. So the video is what attracted me most to him because uh, it's Valentine and my name is Valentine. Because of such actually, um, I got endeared to him, even as a chaplain in Havan there. Because when I came into that the first place, I, 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 I've been there up till now. So that relationship made a lot of impact in my life too, because I saw him as a serious character. And his playway approach in a lot of things maxim out as a personality that can achieve whatever he has at the back of his mind. And that's what made him a special priest. And then majority of people, students, he made that uh, particular chaplaincy very thick. As a lecturer at Avan Ikoku Federal College of Education, Uwere, Imo State, he got sponsorship through the staff development program to study abroad in the United States of America. By August of 1979, I left for the United States of America to the Catholic University of America, where I eventually did a master's degree, another master's degree in religious studies, and a PhD in religious studies and education, specializing in curriculum development and teaching. So I was in America from 1979 to 1984. In 1984, Reverend Father Dr. A.J.V. Obina came back to Nigeria to continue his teaching at the Department of Religion and Cultural Studies, Alvani Koku Federal College of Education, Uwere. He was the head of the department from 1984 to 1987. In the early 80s, I was a student of this uh, great college. And uh, I studied in this department. Like you rightly pointed out, he was my lecturer. Archbishop A.J.V. Obina was you know, one of the lecturers we respected a lot as 
young, you know, jambites. He was regular to classes, was so humble, unassuming, you know, soft-spoken, was kind to a fault. He would always be in the class at the right time to teach. I mean, uh, he was a lecturer by excellence. He never absented himself from classes. And each time he comes, in fact, we're always ready for him because he always had more than enough to give to us as his students. Can't remember any day as Bishop Obinna was, you know, read with any student. He could correct gently. He was a father. On the 10th of July, 1993, while still on sabbatical leave, Something tremendously happened in the life of young Reverend Dr. Anthony Obina. He received a call from Rome that changed his priestly position to the Episcopal hierarchy of his lordship. He was consecrated as the third Catholic bishop of the Catholic Diocese on 4th September 1993. I've been appointed a bishop while I was in America. So I didn't finish the sabbatical leave. I had to uh, leave America to go prepare for ordination as a bishop. So I went to Rome to meet with the Pope and the authorities in Rome. And by the 4th of September 1993, I was ordained the third Catholic bishop of the diocese, the Within six months of his ordination as the third Catholic bishop of Oweri Catholic Diocese from September 1993 to March 1994, another great history was made. On the 26th of March 1994, uh, the Holy Father, Pope St. John Paul, raised the Oweri Diocese to an archdiocese and I was appointed the first Archbishop of Oweri Archdiocese from the 26th of March 1994. But I had to go to Rome in June of that year to receive the official authorization as Archbishop with what is called the Pallium that the Pope wears on the neck. So the Holy Father puts the pallium on around my neck. And then on the 3rd of September of 1994, I was installed as the Archbishop of Oweri Archdiocese. His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Anthony John Valentine Obina began his work as the first Metropolitan Archbishop of Oweri Catholic Archdiocese on 3rd September 1994. I do not work alone. First of all, it is by the grace of God that one, first of all, wakes up if the Lord permits, and the Lord has permitted me to wake up these years as Archbishop. So I work with the priests locally here, work with the laity, work with the reverend sisters, work with so many people who are God's people, God's children, who cooperate with me in the various parishes, and in the various chaplaincies, and in the various institutions that we have, educational institutions, uh, health institutions, and other service institutions, because one, has to operate with councils that uh, give advice and also provide uh, spiritual and financial support because one can do all this alone. With regard to the other diocese, the bishops work with me to a certain extent under me, under my 
uh, directive, counseling, <clears throat> but we work more in communion. They come to represent their diocese, and when we have common things or things to do in common, we share the concerns. Like the seminary is a common concern. We usually meet uh, to talk about the seminary, its programs and its needs and the challenges. And when we have a uh, matter of uh, appointing bishops, we also meet and discuss as required by the Vatican. Uh, every three years we submit names of possible candidates that could be made bishop. And where possible, we also discuss the matter of uh, dioceses, creation of new dioceses in the province. These are the kind of things that we discuss. And sometimes we pray together as a province. All the priests and the bishops of the province will meet uh, to pray together, recollect, purify ourselves, confess our sins, and receive the Holy Eucharist at Mass. So, first and foremost, it is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful in our eyes. And then the cooperation of so many people, some within, many within the Archdiocese and province. There are others outside of our province, our brothers and sisters who are living in Abuja, in Lagos or Port Harcourt, or even overseas in Europe and America. They also find ways of supporting me either spiritually, caringly, or financially. So, we don't talk of uh, uh, huge money, uh, otherwise if I was handling huge money, this place would be scattered. I would just handle modest money to do our work. As the Archbishop of the Catholic Archdiocese, the great contributions of His Grace, Most Reverend Anthony Obina, in the Church, Iboland, Nigeria and the world cannot be overemphasized as his works and actions speak volume to all social structure in the society. For 29 years has been at the helm of affairs um, of the Archdiocese of Oweri and uh, from that time on uh, this number of years, he has built a lot of uh, structures. Uh, we know the Odenibo Pavilion, uh, where we host uh, every year uh, the Addisisan uh, Day celebration, and then also the Odenibo Lecture Series. And then we have um, the Jubilee Hall, we have um, all the other structures uh, around uh, the cathedral, the Ozisa radio, uh, which is um, a very powerful arm of the Adiasisa uh, to communicate uh, the gospel. He called it Ozisa because Ozisa, Oziyama, uh, spreading the good news of Christ to all the world, spreading the truth, spreading justice. And the Holy Rosary International uh, College, uh, Gears College. So it was his vision to have that very school where people can bring their children for uh, complete uh, formation, uh, holistic formation of uh, the children, both academic, spiritual, and uh, all emotional and uh, physical. The Addisis of Oweri, through the uh, Archbishop, is building uh, a new seminary uh, at Izombe. Uh, which uh, has uh, taken off already. There is also this project, uh, Carmelite Monastery uh, at Inishi. Uh, is uh, through his instrumentality that uh, that uh, place is uh, also being built, almost uh, completed, where the Carmelite monks can stay and worship and uh, also uh, begin to uh, spread the gospel of Christ. The Verbum, uh, which is um, the place um, Father Bonner here uh, through the uh, uh, support of the Archbishop is building up uh, that very place, uh, the Vibum for the Archdiocese, where people can go on retreat, where they can go and uh, have uh, some uh, 
or spiritual regeneration of themselves. The Chikum Microfinance Bank, uh, which is uh, a great asset uh, for the Archdiocese. Uh, it has been running for over uh, eight years now, uh, which the um, Archbishop also built up, so that uh, we have a bank uh, that services uh, the people, the needs of the Archdiocese and the needs of uh, the people. <laughs> On a metro ya na ho, inye basara madu. On a metro ya na ho. Inga abo afo ni ishi. Muna ya no mana. Amara na me ya, ngo ju upu. Ni inye basara madu. Ne metro ta ya na ho. O hibe kwede no oba kora. Ken ma 1992. Akwazi ya ya no you care. From Eucharistic. Eucharistic care. Christ cares for the poor, for the marginalized, for the weak. So, what do you care? Ebana care for the widows, for the less privileged, for the blind. He lay and then they back. My way in them quarrel. I went in dish. I went in dog. I don't know one but I name it. She had a Easter or Christmas. Ega home categories of mud in a back. Mendi na ande ne ba wo umu wa ni shipe. Mo abonde ne mo ihe hangwele. Ni ni ha na ha ezu ezu. Na yukwa na ha akwa oke. Anya na ha eme onye ga wo onye Catholic gela. Ai na na bata onye obola. Na mu fo de na na me lo de ka ma do de ka ya. Me nwere ike nwe ya abuo na uwa. Ni na bu nwoke bu daro nwe ya. Then you know, no longer majority of them had you chai quenty and on by a hana or nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. A junior queen holding that gang and I can't let you on hold it and you never hold it. Then I pay a jewel log. I want a jewel log. Why not go log? That one I am. Then I chim one. The dinner name where he go. Just in the way of I na not go log, we be dichi check I na. Of all them be when that you follow la no lo. I got one has rent. All them be one down on no lo. That is mess on my aga kwacha ya kwacha. Eh, holunga I na every Tuesday. Na ri ga na rere nga. I na ke dai kereji rice. In all bula ada pota kwara ni. Otutu nde ni ne shikwe na kaya abia. He wete kwe na support kwa. So you have been here now, Gano. Every third Friday in the month, and they make poor you yama call Bakora. A Benri Ashi Pena Pota. On a dash of one hand, then ye go. This is in a comb, a Mundeca and Deca. So I now watch a human naipu a cotcher. His background and his calling, you have to allow him his way of life and hold your disappointments to yourself as much as possible because there's nothing, seem to be nothing you can do about it. And why do I say this? In modernity, there's a misconception about relationship of a priest with his family. When earlier on, it was a different ball game when you know that he's a missionary man. He's cut off from the family. And he said it on the day he was ordained. He told us enormous second time that it is not because of us that he was made a priest. It is because of the people of God. And we are all part of the people of God. Ours becomes a less attention, and his attention is to the larger people of God who he has to attend to. Bishop Anthony Obina is a multifaceted man. He is a man of multiple talents. Apart from being a religious leader, uh, he 
he has also shown himself to be um, a promoter of the essence, the values of our culture, you know, and uh, he represents uh, what every Igbo traditional leader should represent a moral compass in the community you know and you find that uh, every government that has come in Imo state over the years has uh, placed a high premium on respecting him because he respects himself that is part of the values of Igbo culture an elder attracts to respect himself because he stands by the truth. And so it's not just about promoting Igbo culture, which he does, of course, but he symbolizes it. He symbolizes it. A man of his age in any typical Igbo community represents the soul, the essence of that community. And when issues arise, he stands up like a man and says what is right. So you can't bribe him, everybody knows that. There's nothing you can do to make him not to speak the truth at all times. It's not because he's an archbishop. It's because that is the essence of Igbo culture. That's what makes him so special. You know, there are so few of them. So few. He's the voice of the voiceless. One, two. Is one person that he will starve himself to make sure everybody is fit and is not hungry. He he put all that before himself, and he will never live to see anybody hungry. Instead, he will first go and get that food. There. He will take the one from his mouth and give to them. And the, talking about Nigeria, if you know him from during the war and after the war, he have not ceased. In speaking the truth. He's a true Igbo man. That's why the formation of uh, Oden Igbo is his brainchild. He believes in Igbo culture, he believes in Igbo, and he believes in justice and fairness. He doesn't like anybody to be labeled a lesser human being, like what they have in Nigeria, they call Osu, Ume, Ideala. He, he hates it so much and I hate it just like him. He's somebody that loves every human being irrespective of your background or where you come from. As long as you live a righteous life, whether or not he still will not discard you because of your ways. But he'll continue talking to you to get you to change your ways. So he has done so much in Nigeria. During his days in this department, the Department of Religion, as it was then known, was uh, one of the best and peaceful uh, departments. During his days, the department was very peaceful. The lecturers, you know, worked as a family. And uh, I can't stop, I can't say everything about him, but I know that Archbishop of Vietnam, when I heard that he was made an Archbishop, after, you know, we had left school, I wasn't surprised because of the kind of things he displayed. If you talk about spirituality, he's the highly spiritual. You know, I don't know, uh, when you look at him, we're seeing him as if he was Jesus. We're seeing that time. Uh, his movement, very gentle in movement, everything about him portrayed the image of Christ. I see the Archbishop as uh, a man of uh, strong faith. A man uh, who spends himself for others. If you can uh, uh, think of uh, all the people that come through the cathedral to request for support and uh, all the other things uh, that they're asking, he just, uh, you know, as Jesus Christ says, he pours himself out as a libation. On Sunday 6th March 2022, another important milestone was made in the life of Archbishop A.J.V. Obina. 
at Nigerian Catholic Bishops Conference held in Abuja. On Sunday, the 6th of March 2022, during the first plenary meeting of the Catholic Bishops of Nigeria held in Abuja, Pope Francis' representative or apostolic nuncio in Nigeria, Archbishop Antonio Guido Filippazzi, announced the appointment of a new Metropolitan Archbishop for the Archdiocese of Oweri in the person of Most Reverend Lucius Iwejuru Ugoji. With that appointment, which will take effect on Thursday, 23rd June 2022, Archbishop Ugoji will cease to be the Bishop of Umwahe, but will continue to serve as the Apostolic Administrator of Umwahe Diocese until a new Bishop of Umwahe is appointed. He will also continue to serve as the Apostolic Administrator of Ahira Diocese. On that same Sunday, 6 March 2022, the Apostolic Nuncio equally announced that the Holy Father had appointed me, now Archbishop Emeritus, Apostolic Administrator of the Vacant See of Oweri Archdiocese until Archbishop Ugoji takes possession of the Archdiocese of Oweri. In other words, I will still be serving with the authority of a bishop but not as the Archbishop of Oweri. But I will still be serving with the authority of a bishop in Oweri Archdiocese until Archbishop Ugoji is formally installed on Thursday, 23rd June 2022. His Grace Triumphant return from the Nigerian Catholic Bishops Conference at Abuja was in company of the new Archbishop, Most Reverend Lucius Ugoji and they were welcomed by overwhelming joyous Catholic Fed Force at Sam Mbappe Cargo International Airport, Imo State. Appreciation, thanksgiving, and admiration are shown as the news of his retirement was received by the Catholic and non Catholic faithfuls with great amazement. <laughs> 
It's a ministry we are appreciating greatly. We have paid him a visit and we have told him uh, that whatever can be done to ensure that the Bible lecture is kept alive, we will support the church to ensure that it is kept alive because it complements the efforts of government. Sometimes the government is not able to carry out uh, a lectures as and when we ought to because of obvious challenges. And then Odenibu intervenes. So it complements the efforts, you know. And of course, you know, if we have two Igbo intellectual festivals happening in Imo State, it's to our advantage. There's no other state in, in the Southeast that has such a thing. There's no other archdiocese or diocese that I know of that has such a thing being annually addressed by eminent lecturers. It's only in Imo State, you know. And so we are very appreciative. We'll, uh, we'll not forget him in a hurry and uh, we'll uh, encourage those who are coming after him to ensure that the, the, the flame which he has lit in terms of the promotion of our culture is kept we we'll miss him so much. We we'll miss him so much. And I believe the person that is taking over from him will also do a good job. We pray. But Archbishop Pobina is a rare gym. Unalizing the um, heroic deeds. Because uh, if you have performed, you must leave a big gap when you leave. And that's what actually he has done. He's reached out to approach in a lot of issues. And then uh, his position as Archbishop did not take him out of uh, um, possibly playing himself out of relevance because of his soul. No, he meets up and always 
there for the people. We love him as our archbishop. The priests love him. And he has also helped so much to forge love and fraternity and understanding among our priests. And that's one of those things that are not measurable, but which I know, and many of our priests know, that this is one of his great contributions to the archdiocese and uh, to Oweri at large and Imo State and Nigeria at large. 2022 seems to be an epoch-making year for his grace, Most Reverend Dr. Anthony Obina, as he clocks 50 years in priesthood. The priestly golden jubilee day was on 9th April 2022, which fell into the Lenten season. Thus, the celebration was shifted to 8th and 9th June 2022. I have chosen June 8th, Wednesday, and June 9th, Thursday, as my golden priestly jubilee days. June 8th will feature jubilee convocation lectures under the overall theme, sharing and advancing Jesus' saving light among us. Three principal lectures will be given on the occasion on these topics. First, celebrating the Catholic liturgy today, fidelity and popularity to be given by Most Reverend Augustine Echema, the Bishop of Abba. The second one, rectifying Nigeria's politics in Jesus' saving light, to be given by Dr. Theodore Osanabo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Then the third lecture will be, Salt and Light, colon, the Catholic priest in a new vicious, idolatrous culture and society to be given by Reverend Father Dr. Luke Ijezir. A jubilee occasion is a moment of thanksgiving, reflection, catechesis, and further evangelization. As a way of thanking God and putting a certain closure to his service as a bishop, a number of deacons will be ordained priests a week after his jubilee celebration on the 16th June, 2022. Gratitude, 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 thanks to Amarachi, thanks to the grace of God. Yes, I feel happy, I feel relieved. Uh, I'm looking forward to stepping down and stepping aside because uh, this position has made me more visible and more audible than I would probably have been if I remained a lecturer and chaplain in Alvan. Our God privileged me with this special position that has enabled me to reach into different spheres of our culture, of our society, of our government. And that's why I'm grateful to God for empowering me. I first came largely from making sure that I remained faithful to God and to my calling. So first of all, it's a personal challenge because anybody occupying a position as a prominent as that of Archbishop Rick, you know, so many people are looking at me and wondering how I'm living. I needed to continue to present myself to God as one that could be trusted, one that could be relied upon. I was afraid of disappointing God and disappointing humanity. So that is a, the biggest challenge. Well, I'm not the one to judge to what extent I have done, but I just pray God to forgive my faults and failings. As for human beings, well, there are those who appreciate you, who fight you. There have been times when I've been confronted from within the church and from outside of the church, from the state. Well, not everybody likes what I say or nobody, yeah. not everybody appreciates my style of living or communicating things or doing things in the church and in the state. But once I am convinced that before God and before my conscience, I'm doing something right and good to the glory of God and the good of the people. 
no matter the opposition, I go on to do it. We'll always have regrets for whatever faults and failings. That yes, I have regrets that uh, I, I could have done better in serving God and serving the people. I could have done better. Other regrets that maybe some of the things I plan to do uh, to build, I cannot accomplish them. So I only pray that my successor will be able to accomplish the things I've not been able to do. But certainly, I've not done enough. I can never do enough to justify the position that God has given to me. So there will always be regrets, but I can only, I can only cast myself at the feet of the Lord to say, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, wherever I have failed, either spiritually or morally or structurally, I say, well, God, I know I'm not perfect. I would like to improve and maybe use the time of my being retired and I bishop emeritus to make up for one thing or the other that has been lacking in me. As Archbishop Emeritus, that is, as a retired bishop, the first thing is to withdraw from too much visibility, too much publicity that I have had. I have so much had so much publicity. So I have to hide myself to give the new Archbishop opportunity to do his work. As for the work that I have done, it is work in continuity. The work I have done whether spiritually or caritatively or educationally or structurally is not personal work it is the work of the church and it has to continue one way or the other i will live a more quiet private life but i'll still be celebrating mass here and there but that will be more discreetly because well, the new archbishop has to occupy the ground, occupy the territory. I will plead with all colleagues and uh, other Christians and people of goodwill to give maximum support to the new Archbishop, Archbishop Lucius Iwajiro Gorgi, especially as he has a double responsibility of not only being the Archbishop of Owari High Diocese, or in fact a triple responsibility, Archbishop of Owari High Diocese, Metropolitan of Ogwari Province and the President of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria. So he has uh, been entrusted with a higher responsibility than myself. My exit should not be a cause of uh, regret or anger or bitterness. My exit should be a cause of thanksgiving that God has uh, allowed me to uh, serve as Archbishop till the official 75th year. A junior seminarian to an Archbishop and now to Archbishop Emeritus and now to Apostolic Administrator. After, Apost after June 23rd, I will no longer be called Apostolic Administrator. I will simply be called Archbishop Emeritus of Oware Archdiocese. For his grace, Most Reverend Dr. Anthony John Valentine Obina. His work as Metropolitan Archbishop of Owerri Catholic Archdiocese has come to an end as he now works as Apostolic Administrator of Owerri Catholic Archdiocese until 23rd June 2022 when he will finally bow out gloriously and majestically as Archbishop Emeritus.
shall drink from the stream by the wayside. 